This very unique planet you're seeing is Earth, a planet that's very alive and it's permanently going through changes. You might not see it with your eyes that the world is changing, but when you add thousands of years together, the changes will show itself. In this video, we want to talk about a massive lake. The biggest lake in Earth's history, Lake Paratethys. To truly see this massive body of water, we have to go about 30 million years ago. Even though 30 million years ago seems crazy, but compared to Earth's history, it's right next door. The Paratethys would start from the Balkans and go all the way to Tajikistan. And what you're seeing is the theory on how it looked on Earth's map. Pretty much the mountain ranges or the walls that would hold this lake together were the Alps, Dinaric Alps, Carpathia, Taurus in Anatolia, and Albors in Iran. These were the mountain ranges that wouldn't allow this body of water to spill into the Mediterranean or the Indian Ocean, and that's why it was known as a true lake so it didn't have any open field that would lead to the open waters. After some research, geologists found out that about 12 million years ago, between the Alps and the Dinaric Alps, a part of this mountain range basically fell through, leaving an opening allowing the Paratethes water to lead into the Mediterranean. And they believe this was the time that the Paratethes lost the name lake and it became a true sea. But back in the day when it was actually a true lake, its size was 2,800,000 square kilometers. And if you want to compare to that to a country, it's the size of Argentina, the eighth largest country in the world. If you put all the lakes together on planet Earth, it only makes up 1.8% of its surface area. But the number gets even more interesting when you add them all together because together they only make up 2.6 million square kilometers. So if you put all of them together, they are already smaller than the Paratithes. And the number gets more interesting when you actually add the volume together. If you add the volume of every lake except the Caspian Sea together, it adds up to 125,000 cubic kilometers. But the Paratithes body of water would hold more than 1.8 million cubic kilometers. But you have to know, inside the Paratithes, you had the Caspian, you had the Aral Sea, and the Black Sea. But just like we said, the planet is always changing. There's no way it can stay in one form forever. So it's very normal for a lake this size to lose its name. And after 20 million years, it was time for Paratithes to start saying goodbye. There are a lot of ideas on how the Paratethes got destroyed, but the strongest one is that when the African plate pushed on the Mediterranean and it closed off its access to the Atlantic Ocean through the Strait of Gibraltar, this caused the entire Mediterranean to get warmer overall. And when that happens, the body of water starts to evaporate, and that means the Mediterranean gets smaller and smaller. Before this took place, Islands in the Mediterranean did not exist yet. A lot of the parts you see in Italy today weren't there and they showed themselves after the Mediterranean started to evaporate. And when this took place, more water came from the Paratithes and fell into the Mediterranean and started going away, drying the entire lake out. When this continues for millions of years, the entire body of water of Paratithes is completely gone but it does leave three massive basins. That's the Aral Sea, the Caspian Sea, and the Black Sea, which is connected to the Mediterranean now. 
Inside the Parathethes, it had its own ecosystem and there were marine life that do not exist anymore that used to live in there. And that's why in the ancient parts that this sea used to exist, you can find fossils inland, places you would never think of. Parathethes alone, you can even find fossils inside the middle of the country like Iran because this place used to be connected to the Indian Ocean and that's why there's a whole lot of ancient fossils, especially marine fossils in the middle of the modern day desert. But it wasn't always a desert, that's what we're trying to say. The sea we're talking about is called the Neotetis Ocean. It was basically the part of Indian Ocean and it went all the way to the Mediterranean before the Indian subcontinent hit Eurasia. So this was much, much before Parathetes took place. When you look at geology, lakes are extremely sensitive and if you change something, you could easily destroy it. We have even seen lakes being destroyed in about a hundred years, like the Aral Sea, which was completely destroyed by the Soviets. This was mainly due because they kept running different types of dams and they wouldn't allow fresh water to flow into the sea and they would use it for different farms. And when time passes, the lake will dry up because it doesn't have a fresh source anymore. The Caspian doesn't seem good either, but the Caspian Sea is the biggest lake in the world. But you also have to know that the Caspian Sea is 20 meters below sea level. And that complicates a lot of more things in the process. The Parathetes had its own type of marine life. Marine life that most of them cannot be found anymore. Like for example, the smallest whale in history was found in this body of water, called the Ketotherium. After the Parathetes started to connect to the Mediterranean and it lost its label of being a lake, this tiny whale lost its life too because its life slowly got harder and harder and it couldn't withstand it anymore and that's why it went extinct. And that's one of the reasons you can find its fossil in the ancient lands that the Parathetes used to roam. Maybe if the Cototrium could withstand all that change, it could have been still found in the Caspian Sea or the Aral Sea. But unfortunately, it went extinct. Another good example is the sturgeon fish that has been around for more than 200 million years ago. So that means this type of fish used to also live in the Parathetes because you can find this fish in the Caspian Sea mostly and the Black Sea. The map you're seeing is where the sturgeon fish is found. The red marks are the extinct marks. That's basically where the Parathetes Sea used to be. But the blue ones are modern day sturgeon fish, which is mainly Caspian and the Black Sea. But you can find sturgeon fish that has been imported to different parts of the world. Like for example, in the eastern part of the US, there's a whole lot of sturgeon fish farms, but those weren't there naturally. Humans have been around for less than 3 million years, but in this very short period of time, they've had the biggest impact on planet Earth, some negative impacts and some positive impacts. 